Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the WWE 2K24 Universe Mode series. First Monday Night Raw after Extreme Rules, but here tonight we have some women's action. And we're going to head backstage really quick because the Raw General Manager has some words for us, a big announcement. Oh hell yeah. Now I'm here with a big announcement that's going to shake things up in the WWE Universe. I'm talking about the King and Queen of the Ring tournaments. The winner of these tournaments aren't just going to walk away with a shiny crown and a pat on the back. They're going to earn themselves a one-way ticket to a title shot on their respective brands. And that crown jewel, a new king and queen, will be crowned. So, we've got Natalia out here. And obviously, at Extreme Rules, she did actually assault Rhea Ripley after the last woman standing match. So, we're going to hear some words from Natalia and see what she has to say regarding the Queen's Crown tournament and that attack. Ladies and gentlemen, Saturday night at Extreme Rules, we witnessed a moment that shook the very foundation of the women's division. You witnessed Natalia making a statement, a statement that needed to be made. Rhea Ripley, oh Rhea, you may have reclaimed your precious women's world championship, but let's not forget who you had to go through to get there. My best friend, the baddest woman on the planet, Ronda Rousey. And while I have respect for Ronda's abilities, I couldn't stand by and watch as she and Rhea received all the glory. I am Natalia Neidhart, the Queen of Hearts, and I demand respect. I have poured blood, sweat and tears into this business and yet, time and time again, I'm overlooked. Well no more, I refuse to be an afterthought in this division any longer. Hold on a second. No way. Could it be? Surely not. The glow is back in WWE, I believe. Is she here? She is. Naomi is here on Monday Night Raw. Oh my word. Well, I wonder what Naomi's doing here. What has she got to say? I'm sure that she's going to have some words for Natalia. And the WWE Universe making her return to WWE. The glow is back on Monday Night Raw. I'm sure she's going to be wanting some slice of that pie with that world championship. Natalia doesn't seem too impressed. But Naomi says, hold up Natalia, hold up just a minute. First of all, it's good to be back in WWE. Second of all, I couldn't help but overhear your little triad about being overlooked and the disrespect. But let's get one thing straight. I'm not just here to take up space. I'm here to make an impact. Well, well, well. Look who decided to show up. The glow is back, huh? Let me remind you, Naomi. This isn't about you. This is about me staking a claim in this division. Oh, I know it's not about me, Natalia. But maybe it should be. Because if there's one thing I've learned during my time away, it's that opportunity waits for no one. And when I heard Steve announce the Queen's Crown Tournament earlier tonight, I knew exactly where I wanted to start. You want a piece of me, Naomi? You want to challenge the Queen of Spades in the Queen's Crown Tournament? You're on. You got it, Natty. But just remember, when it comes to crowns, there's only one Queen who's going to reign supreme, and that's me. So, ladies and gentlemen, looks like we have our first Queen of the Ring match. Natalia going one-on-one -on -one with Naomi. Naomi clearly not happy with Natalia pretty much forcing her way into the title picture. And seeing as Stone Cold has announced that the Queen of the Ring tournament is starting this week, Naomi saw the opportunity and she took advantage. So... One of these two will be progressing to the next round in that Queen of the Ring tournament. The final will take place at the next pay-per-view, which is Crown Jewel. And the winner of that will get a title opportunity of their choosing. So there are going to be some superstars competing from Raw and some competing from SmackDown. That goes for both the Queen's Crown tournament and the King of the Ring tournament. But here tonight, Natalia. Trying to take down Naomi. Naomi returning to WWE. So she'll be looking to get her universe mode off to a flying start. 
Natalia just randomly attacking Rhea Ripley after her title defense at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. A brutal last woman standing match that was between Rhea Ripley and Ronda Rousey, but into the cover now, and a big kick out at one by Naomi. Naomi with a kip up, and look at the athleticism of Naomi. She's not missed a beat. Onto the attack now. Naomi sending Natalia to the outside, but Natalia returns with a big right hand, and Naomi could have been looking to potentially go off a springboard there, flying off the ropes. Now Natalia going on a bit of a detour there. Now big kicks being delivered. Huge strikes by Naomi, trying to keep on the attack here, trying to keep the upper hand. What an opportunity it would be for Naomi to potentially win this entire tournament on her first appearance during this Universe Mode series. A big kick there delivered off the springboard. Naomi's turning things round right now. She loves to use those legs as weapons. She's doing that effectively here. Just leg dropping on the arm of Natalia. Now into the cover now, testing out Natalia. Not even a one count. Natalia's got plenty of fight left in her. Gonna need to do more damage there, Naomi. Now sending Natalia to the outside once again. Natalia quickly back to her feet and a big clothesline there. Takes Naomi down. Big kick delivered. Now Naomi getting sent into the ring post. And Natalia making her way back into the ring now. Natalia's feeling it here. Naomi slowly makes her way back to her feet. Naomi just taking a second on the outside to recover before she heads back in. Well, she's not going to head back in. Natalia's going to meet her outside. And Naomi using her quickness to get out of the way there. And Naomi into a neck breaker. And Natalia fell for the trap. Naomi using her experience. Both of these superstars well experienced in this division. So to be honest, anyone else in this competition wouldn't really want to come up against either of these two. A huge drop kick there delivered by Naomi. Naomi taking advantage of maybe some slight desperation by Natalia. Now heading back into the ring. Naomi going for a drop kick, but Natalia able to get out of the way. Naomi now missing on that big right hand. Oh, and a big clothesline there by Natalia. Keeping on the attack. So Natalia was clearly stepping up for her long term friend, Ronda Rousey, at the Extreme Rules pay per view. And maybe she's even trying to get herself into that title picture, but she's got a little bit more work to do. Can't just really attack the champion and expect an opportunity. Have to earn your opportunity. And into the suplex, into the cover. She's got the bridge. This one could be all over, but no. Two count, and Naomi's able to kick out. And slamming Naomi down. Sorry, Natalia down. Naomi slamming Natalia down to the mat. Now off the springboard and the hip attack. This one could be all over. Naomi now, drop kick to the spine. Could she be potentially thinking about ending this one soon? Naomi off the springboard again with that kick. Straight across the jaw. This one could be all over. Natalia looks like she's down and out, but no, just a one count again. Natalia showing her resiliency. Now back to her feet, and Naomi may have been looking to end things there, but Natalia's feeling it. She's getting herself back into this one, trying to build her own momentum. Naomi's in the corner. That's not where you want to be. A huge clothesline delivered into the turnbuckles. And a big clothesline there delivered once again. Natalia closing in on the victory into the cover now. Naomi's in deep, deep trouble. This could be all over. No. Naomi gets the shoulder up. Naomi's showing the heart and resiliency that's got her to where she is today. Natalia having to roll to the outside. Naomi now. And the referee just blocking Naomi off there. It looked like Naomi may have been going for a suicide dive. Natalia just kind of laughing about it, but Naomi going to head to the outside anyway. Natalia trapping her. Oh, slammed face first 
into the announce desk. Naomi again able to reverse things though. Staying one step ahead. Now Naomi with a huge knee to the side of the head there. Natalia keeps keeps allowing Naomi to get a bit too much attack and offense in this one. She keeps losing her concentration. And into the still steps, but no, Natalia puts the brakes on. Now on a six count, Naomi sent towards the barricade. Natalia potentially looking to take a count out victory here. Naomi needs to get back into the ring really quickly. Eight count now. Naomi's able to make it back into the ring. Natalia. I wonder if she maybe didn't see Naomi make her way into the ring because that was a bit of an odd time to do a taunt. Naomi could be closing in on the victory here. Brings Natalia back to her feet. Natalia able to turn things around. Back and forth we go in this one. Who's going to progress in the Queen's Crown Tournament? Natalia is on top of things right now. A drop kick to the spine of Naomi. And then a kick to follow. Really targeting that spine is Natalia. Naomi will not want a spinal injury on her first match back in WWE. And now Naomi looking to finish it here, potentially into the sunset flip. And now she's got the submission hold locked in here. Could Natalia be about to tap out? What a message this would be. No. Natalia is able to slip out of it. Oh, it looks like Naomi, Naomi may have actually been the one to release the hold there. Now Naomi measuring... And oh my goodness, Naomi looking for the sharpshooter on Natalia. Oh my word, is Natalia about to tap out? No. It looks like Naomi has a little bit more respect for Natalia than just making her tap out to her own move. But Naomi heading to the top rope now. Closing in on the victory. You've got to think that Naomi could be about to progress in the Queen's Crown Tournament into the cover now. After the neck breaker. And oh my goodness, Natalia gets the shoulder up. I thought for sure this one was all over. Naomi says this one's all done. She's done playing around now. Looking to potentially finish this match up. Taking Natalia into the corner. Natalia's in deep, deep trouble now. Naomi off the springboard. And this could be all over. Into the cover now. Naomi for the victory to progress in the Queen's Crown Tournament. No! Natalia gets the shoulder up at the last possible second. Absolutely incredible. I thought for sure Naomi had the victory there. My goodness. What a battle these two are putting on for us. A huge drop kick off the springboard again. Naomi... Can't quite keep on the offense. Natalia trying to get herself back into this one. The crowd really behind Naomi here. Natalia continuing her offense, but no. Naomi again misses on that big right hand. And now these two going to trade blows in the middle of the ring. Who's going to come out on top here? Big bombs being delivered. Back and forth we go, but Natalia getting the upper hand now. Natalia... Oh my word, back and forth we go, but Natalia's had enough. A kick to the midsection and the crowd booing Natalia out of the building. And she's asking them why on earth they're cheering Naomi when she's not even been in the WWE. Natalia's been here, but Natalia now potentially looking to finish this match up. Going for the sharpshooter, this one could be all over. It doesn't look like she's quite got it fully locked in, but Natalia nonetheless looks like... Whoa, Naomi's tapped out and I was just about to say it looked like Naomi may have been close to the ropes there But Natalia with an absolutely massive victory As she progresses in the Queen's Crown Tournament A disappointing start though for Naomi to her universe mode She'll have to look at a different way to get to that Women's World Championship Natalia on the other hand progressing in the Queen's Crown Tournament We're yet to find out the other participants in the tournament there will be two more superstars from Raw, and then there will be four coming into this tournament from SmackDown as well. So, moving on with the show, and we have the Demon, or not the Demon tonight actually, the Demon was there 
at Extreme Rules, but we have just Finn Balor, the Prince, making his way out here. I believe he has some words for the WWE Universe. The WWE Universe aren't really receiving Finn Balor very well here tonight. But the Demon did make his return at Extreme Rules, and I'm sure that Finn Balor is probably going to maybe explain the Demon's actions at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. So Finn Balor seems like he's trying to get himself into that World Heavyweight Championship picture, but the question does have to loom about the World Tag Team titles because he still holds that with Damian Priest. They were successful in defending those titles against the LWO at Extreme Rules, but the chemistry between Finn Balor and Damian Priest wasn't really there. Had a few spots where they bumped into each other and maybe even caused a bit of damage to each other as well. So I wonder how the future is looking for Judgment Day, especially if Finn Balor is seemingly looking to go into the solo division. But only time will tell. Finn Balor, I'm sure we may even get some answers here tonight. Finn Balor trying to climb back to the top of the mountain. He held that Universal Championship a good few years ago, and I guess that he's trying to get back up to that point in his career. At Extreme Rules, Chaos reigns supreme, but amidst the chaos, a truth emerged. A truth that seems to have eluded both Carmelo Hayes and Seth Rollins. You see, while they're so consumed by their own vendettas, blinded by the desire for championship gold, they failed to see the real threat lurking in the shadows. They failed to see me. Carmelo, Seth, you may have your battles, your wars over that World Heavyweight Championship, but know this, I am the constant the ever-present force that you cannot ignore. Hold on a second. The former World Heavyweight Champion, Seth freaking Rollins, is here, and Finn Balor doesn't seem too impressed. Well, it looks like Seth Rollins has heard enough already. You could argue that maybe even Finn Balor has potentially cost Seth Rollins that championship during that match because the Demon did end up just unleashing on both Carmelo Hayes and Seth Rollins, but I think he probably dealt more damage to Seth, to be honest, hitting the coup de grace. But Seth Rollins has some words for Finn. Oh, Finn, Finn, always the opportunist, aren't you? Sneaking your way into the spotlight whenever you can. You did it with your buddies in Judgment Day, and now you're trying to do it with the World Heavyweight Championship. Speaking of Judgment Day, shouldn't you be focusing on those World Tag Team titles? Seth, if you think for one second that I'm afraid of you, you're sorely mistaken. You see, unlike you, I don't need to resort to underhanded tactics. I let my actions speak for themselves. Beating around the bush, I see. Okay, that's fine. Well, Finn, if you're so confident in your abilities, how about we settle things right here, right now? You and me, one-on-one, -on -one, in that very ring. You're on, Seth. But just remember, while you and Carmelo may be focused on each other, I'm focused on one thing and one thing only, the World Heavyweight Championship. Now get your ass in this ring. So, looks like we're going to get oh, into this main event, but the World Heavyweight Champion Carmelo Hayes assaulting Seth Rollins before this matchup. Now this probably pay, plays into what Finn Balor was just saying. Carmelo Hayes and Seth Rollins are so focused on each other that they seem to be ignoring Finn. Now, Finn would potentially be looking to take advantage here right now. We're going to get into this main event. Referee rings the bell and Finn Balor down straight out the gate with an attack on Seth freaking Rollins. Seth with a kick to the midsection. Big right hand delivered. And into a German suplex with the bridge into the cover now. Sure, it's going to take more than that to keep Finn Balor down. And Finn... Making his way back into the ring. Seth was looking for a baseball slide. But this match is going 100 miles an hour at the moment. These two just absolutely unloading on each other. Finn Balor showing the aggression here. Big right hands delivered. Chops and strikes to the jaw. Finn Balor really showing a new side of himself. Sending a clear message that he's coming after that World Heavyweight Championship. So... He could be spreading himself a little bit thin, though, because he is currently one half of the World Tag Team Champions. 
him and Damian Priest hold those titles at the moment, but they did have a bit of a struggle in their first title defense. A knee drop delivered just there against the LWO and into the cover now. Finn Balor potentially with the victory. No, Seth freaking Rollins able to kick out. You could argue that maybe Finn Balor may have even cost Seth Rollins the title at Extreme Rules. The demon came out to be the special guest referee during the World Heavyweight Championship match. But Finn Balor with a big right hand delivered there. These two know each other so well going back and forth here. The pace isn't slowing down either. A big gut buster delivered there. And now Seth Rollins off of the ropes and a knee delivered to the head of Finn Balor. And Finn Balor into another sling blade. And just stomping away at the ribs of Seth freaking Rollins here. Seth Rollins can't be 100% after that brutal matchup he had with Carmelo Hayes. The demon Finn Balor was simply the special guest referee, so he should pretty much be fairly fresh, you would have to think. Finn Balor now taking Seth over to the apron and delivering big forearms to the spine of Seth freaking Rollins. We know Seth Rollins has had lower back problems in the past. Seth Rollins able to turn things around though. You must know that Finn Balor is trying to target that spine and those ribs. Seth Rollins though, keeping on the attack here. Impressive display from both of these men. A huge clothesline delivered. Both of these men showing exactly why they should be in the world title picture and into the cover now off of the springboard moonsault but just a one count. Finn Balor has plenty of fight left in him. Makes his way back to his feet. Looking for a bit of a super kick there was Seth Rollins. Able to turn things around again. Seth Rollins not allowing Finn Balor an inch here. And Seth Rollins into the pedigree. But Seth Rollins, the fatigue is setting in. Now Seth, what's he going for here? Seth Rollins could be looking to end this matchup into the curb stomp. And Finn Balor's been busted wide open into the cover now for the victory. Seth freaking Rollins, no. Finn Balor gets the shoulder up. Well, that was a huge opportunity for Seth Rollins to put Finn Balor away, but Finn Balor showing his resiliency. He's not going to lie down. And oh, Seth Rollins played a bit of possum there and was able to take advantage, takes things to the outside now. Probably a bit smart from Finn Balor to try and get a bit of space. But Seth Rollins isn't going to allow him that space and into another sling blade, this time onto the concrete. Seth Rollins now turning things around. Elbow delivered to the spine again. And now targeting those ribs once more. Driving his foot into the rib cage of Seth freaking Rollins and stamping away at the arm as well. Now Seth Rollins makes his way back to his feet and a huge knee strike delivered to the temple. Looked like it was delivered right where that wound is on Finn Balor's head. Now Finn Balor looking to send Seth into the ring, but Seth turns it around, able to take advantage. Seth with the upper hand now, a huge forearm delivered. Finn Balor's in some trouble right now. Seth Rollins off of the, ro off of the ropes and into the knee strike across the jaw. Once again, and Seth Rollins off the springboard again into the moonsault, looking for the cover again. Could potentially be all over. Finn Balor's in deep trouble and oh my goodness. Finn Balor at two and nine temps gets the shoulder up. I thought this one was all over. Finn Balor with a quick kip up there. And now Finn Balor driving Seth Rollins down to the mat. We saw him deliver that maneuver at Extreme Rules as a special guest referee. But Seth Rollins again able to get his shoulder up. Now Finn Balor taking control. Putting Seth Rollins onto the ropes and now... Seth Rollins dumps Finn Balor to the outside. Seth Rollins. Just awaiting Finn Balor to make his way back into the ring. Seth using the ref as a bit of a shield. Finn Balor now. Oh, super kick delivered. Finn Balor looked like he was sending a bit of a message. Almost trying to make Seth Rollins remember the demon. 
from this Saturday just gone. But Seth wasn't having any of it. And these two trading on the outside. They've got to be careful out here because it's dangerous. Into the announce table goes Finn Balor. They're going to make their way back into the ring. They know that this match has to end between the ropes. And Finn Balor able to slip in behind there. You've got to think as well that Seth Rollins, does he head back to the back of the line for the World Heavyweight Championship or is he still in the picture? We don't know yet. At Extreme Rules, I was assuming that it would be his last opportunity, but if he's victorious here tonight, you've got to think maybe he may still de deserve another opportunity at that title. But he heads to the top rope now, into the frog splash, which connects into the cover now. I think this one's got to be all over. Finn Balor is in deep trouble, and Seth freaking Rollins picks up the victory. Well, things just get bad, go from bad to worse for Finn Balor. But Seth Rollins keeps his momentum. What a victory that is for him. Could he be potentially heading back towards that World Heavyweight Championship? Only time will tell, but I'm sure he's not going to allow that championship to get too far from his grasp. 